Welcome to Aspects of Riding with your host, James Kelly. For the next 60 minutes, we'll explore every aspect of riding, including how to create, format, and even sell your work. The phone lines are open at 731-1230. That's 731-1230 or toll-free. 1-866-820-KLAV. Now, let's get right. Here's your host, James Kelly. Hello and welcome to Aspects of Writing. I'm your host, James Kelly. Today's topic Hello and welcome to Aspects of Writing. Uh, this is James Kelly, your host. And today's topic is promoting yourself. On your computer, you can listen to this broadcast at www.klav1230am.com. Or you can view us live on YouTube at youtube.com aspect forward slash aspects of writing and just click on the featured button. Uh, my guests for today's shows are authors Jeff Horton, Judy McFadden, and Dana Michelli. And, but however, before we get started, I would like to introduce Jan Corsi. Jan is here for a, what we call Mentoring Jan. Uh, Jan is a new author who we have chosen to guide on her path as a self-published author. Uh, Dana Michelli with Writers in the Sky is here to update us on the editing process. So, Dana, where are we with the book, uh, The Secrets of Time, and how is the editing processing going along? Process going along. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, hi, Jan, James, everyone. Good morning. Um, I, it's good morning. Here it's 5 o'clock. <laughs> good um, afternoon. It's 5 o'clock <laughs> where I am, too. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds um, like time for a break to me. <laughs> I know, right? I have my coffee right here. I'm, I'm ready for my break. Um, it's going very well. I'm working on the second third of the novel, and as the first third, it's a beautiful book. It's a great story, and um, I'm just I'm going through it to make sure the language flows smoothly and, and, you know, making notes to Jan about suggestions for, you know, to add details and or, um, you know, how she could develop the characters a little more fully. But, I mean, it's a beautiful story. It's a beautiful book, and I know it's going to do very well. All right, so Jan, how do you feel about how it's going so far? Well, I am so thrilled. And Dana, I told uh, uh, James earlier, don't read my book until Dana's done with it because <laughs> what you were doing is just, it's beautiful. Oh, I sat there last you. night and I was reading all of the, the suggestions and things that you had written, and I just sat there crying away. I just love my characters so much more. Oh, me too. I love your characters. They're great. Well, I think what's interesting here is, is what, what we want our listeners to understand is that the editor is so important. I mean, Extraordinarily important. Yeah, and it doesn't matter your degree because you need someone who's an expert in, in realizing how a book must flow. And that, that's as far as the character development, the syntax, everything. Um, and Dana, I know you've done quite a bit. We did talk about this a little bit. And you did help Jan quite a bit when it comes to you know the proper syntax and formulating the characters. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. But, Dana no, has done so much of it is practice. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jen. Uh, yeah. it, 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 when, you're, when you're a new author, you just, and it's so hard to edit your own work. It's, right. it's not, it's nothing against the author. You know, it's your baby, and you're looking at it a certain way, and it's just, it's very hard to step outside yourself. And that would go for me or anybody else. Right. It's just another pair of eyes. It just makes it, mm -hmm. it easier, you know. And, and sometimes you have to kill your baby, Jan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's well, that's what they it. told me. You know, there were certain things and I didn't want to change it. I just loved it. And you have to kill your baby sometimes. <laughs> I, oh, no. I, I am so amazed with what Dana has done yeah. that when I read it, it just flows so much better. And it was, it's my very first effort. And um, what she's done with it is, is just wonderful. She hasn't changed anything that I've said, but she's put it in a different order and uh, brought it to the proper time. And, and you're right. I'm getting mixed up going from past to present, present to past. and Right. Yeah, we talked about that a little bit as yeah. well. That, that's so important. It's really hard to know what, what tense you're in. When, you know, when you're writing, you're just writing it. Yeah, that's you know? it. Mm -hmm. so. so, Dana, what do you have to say about that? Um, I, I agree. I think it's, you know... It can't be, I mean, editing is important, yes, and I love what I do, and it's, it's, I get so much pleasure out of knowing that I've helped someone with their story, but, it, again, it's the author's story, and that's a gift, and, you know, it, it's coming all from your head, you know what I mean, and that's, that's really how I look at it, it's, it's your baby, and as far as the content, that's why I don't change it, it's your baby, and, if, you know, I, I could always say, hmm, you know, would that character do that, I put a little note in the margin for the author, 
but um, the, at the end of the day, it's 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 their their story, and they have control over it. And well, really it is important. It is important that we bring up one thing that you did. You made a suggestion to Jan when it comes to the development of the story to mm-hmm. add something to it to add flavor for what's going to happen toward the end. And I think it's important to mention this because as a writer, I've done the same thing. My first novel, I had to go back and create two new chapters in order to bring some idea or concept of what was going to take place in the future. So it's, it's important for someone like Dana, who's an editor, to look at it objectively and say, well, here's what you really need to do. Find some way of bringing this into character. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the, she, one of the best things I could, in, in addition to having an editor, is to read, 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 and see what other authors get away with. And, you know, you really you learn so much just by reading, you know, certain books. Like, I mean, I, I give people recommendations all the time. Like, if you want character development, read, you know, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. You're not going to find a better female character than that. You know, or read, you know, something. I just, I always give, you know, whether it's character development, you know, um, if it's a mystery, what can you get away with and have it be plausible? You know, I have my little go-to list that mm-hmm. I tell people because it really, really helps. Mm-hmm. You know, they always come back to me and say, wow, I learned so much just from reading this novel and seeing what like, Dean Koontz did. You know what I mean? So um, that's, that's another tip that I usually give people. So where are we going to be next week what, or in two weeks? Where, what do you think we're going to be talking about in a couple of weeks? Just, you're going to do the next one-third of the novel. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, I'm thinking. I'm thinking. I'll be pretty much, you know, towards the end. Okay. And I'm thinking that I I will be able to. Then it will be kind of the opposite of starting the story. I'll I'll be at the end and I'll be looking back and saying, Hey, have we covered everything? Okay. You know, right. did, how is how is the story wrapping up and how is it leading into the next one? Because Jan has others planned. Right. So you want to make sure that it's you know it's it's you know leaving a couple of you know mystery you know mysteries going while tying up other loose ends that yeah. you need to tie up for this story Absolutely. so yeah. that's what we'll be looking at well dana are you going to be able to stick around with us for this hour absolutely okay so jan's going to be here in the studio with me so we're going to move on with the show, if that's all right, Jan. Well, uh, one thing first. Can we mention the website where oh, people can absolutely. go to, uh, yes. to find my book? Yeah. It's authr.com. Yeah, that's A-U-T-H-R, A-U-T-H-R dot com. com. Secret, the Secrets of Time by Janet Corsi. And uh, <laughs> give me a help out, guys. <laughs> yeah, what we've done for Jan, and I will mention this again, in the, in the beginning process of, of this whole mentoring thing, we did what was called a fundraising. And the idea is to show someone how they can go out there if you're a first-time author and you need funding to get your project off the ground, how there's many ways you can go out there and get that funding. And this is what we've done with Author.com. It's a site where you can go, and you can basically, what you're doing, even though you're donating money, you're really pre-buying the book. Because when you donate X amount of dollars, you'll get a, a, a free copy of the book when it comes out. Right. So, you know, if you get a chance, go to Author, and that's without the O, Author.com. And put in the Secrets of Time by Jan Corsi, and then you'll get an idea of what we're talking about. All and right. And you get to take a look at the the cover of the book. Absolutely, yeah, that's great, and it is a nice cover. I, I love it. Uh, and have you seen it, Dana? Yes, yes, I love it. Yeah. It's beautiful. All right, if you are just tuning in, you're listening to Aspects of Writing with me, your host, James Kelly, here on KLEV 1230 on the AM dial. And on your computer, you can listen to this broadcast at www.klev1230am.com. You can view us live at YouTube at youtube.com forward slash Aspect of Writing. That's all one word. And just click on the Featured button. My guests today are authors Jeff Horton, Judy McFadden, and Dana Michelli. Uh, Jeff, are you there? Yes, I am. All right, Jeff, and I know Judy's there. I'm here. All right. And we have a f- uh, few fun facts and quotes. And, Jan, would you like to read the first one? Sure, because it really <laughs> pertains to me. <laughs> <laughs> Creativity is often part of mental illness, with writers particularly susceptible. <laughs> According to a study of more than one, than one million people, writers had a higher risk of anxiety and bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, unipolar depression, and substance abuse. This study was conducted by a Swedish researcher at the Karolinska Mm -hmm. Institute. The institute further found that writers were almost twice as likely as the general population to kill themselves. Now, as long as that doesn't include my editor, we're good. Well, I think (laughs) what this is basically saying is there's a bunch of nuts on the radio right now. (laughs) (laughs) Could be right. (laughs) All right. And Jeff, would you mind reading number two? Sure would. 
Currently, Toronto is ranked as a major user of social media. In fact, Toronto boasts over 700,000 users on Facebook alone. Yeah, I, mean, I brought this point up because it's important to realize how we're going to go into that in a little bit, that social media is so important when it comes to promoting yourself. And Judy, would you mind taking number three? Okay. Touring and promoting and recording take a lot of time. It's just getting the right balance that's important. A quote from singer, songwriter, and actress Jamelia. And Dana, would you mind taking number four? Sure. This is a quote from Taylor Dean. My first tour, I was on the road for 18 months. You're just out there promoting. Yeah. And that's probably the truth when it comes to your first novel even. You know, you're going to just be out there promoting. I hope so. Sure. <laughs> um, I'm going to read the last one. I travel around the world constantly promoting my projects and endorsing products. Yes, I do get paid to go to parties. In fact, I'm the person who started the whole trend for paid appearances. But when you see me at a party, I'm always working or promoting something. And that was Paris Hilton. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, my first guest is Jeff Horton, and Jeff was born in North Dakota, and he's the youngest son of a career Air Force uh, Master Sergeant, where he spent the first four years of his life before moving to North Carolina. Um, he's a voracious reader growing up, and he read the Bible and stories by many popular authors, including Sir Arthur Conan Doyle and H.G. Wells, Jules Verne, uh, Edgar Rice Burroughs, um, Michael Crichton, and Tom Clancy, C.S. Eliot, and J.R.R. Tolkien. Jeff's first novel, The Great Collapse, Survivors of the Pulse, is a story about the coming of the pulse and the end of civilization, and was published in 2010. The Dark Age, Survivors of the Pulse, the sequel to The Great Collapse, was published in 2011, as was The Prophet, a fictitious story about the life of John March, one of the witnesses sent by God to warn humanity about the Antichrist and the end of days. Released on September 1, 2012, The Way of Nakar. Is that Nakar, Jeff? Uh, Nikor. Nikor, okay. Uh -huh. Tales of Eden is a story about four children who find themselves lost and stranded on a strange alien planet and struggle to find a way home. Jess' fifth novel, entitled Cyberspace, is a technical thriller in which the world is brought to the brink of nuclear war after a strain, string of deadly cyber warfare attacks against the United States. Jeff is a member of the North Carolina Writers Network. Jeff, what else can you tell us about Jeff Horton, the author? Well, I can tell you that... Uh I have definitely been bitten by the writing bug, mm -hmm. else I wouldn't be up till 2 or 3 in the morning many nights uh, working on the novel. So, I, uh, you know, I've, I've, I was in IT for, uh, uh, still am, my day job for about, uh, you know, 25 years, and and uh, started writing with The Great Collapse uh, maybe about, about four or five years ago. And uh, as you can tell, I've been prolific. I just enjoy it, and... Uh, in fact, I'm already working on the sequel to Cyberspace, novel called Frontiers. So, it's uh, I just really have found that I really enjoy uh, the creativity, and uh, you know, I find my I, I never realized I had such an artist inside. Now, I want to thank you, Jeff, for being on the show today because I know that you're working and you're actually out of town and you're calling in from out of town. So I, would, I appreciate that. Oh, gosh, I appreciate you having me on, James. Thank you. And, Jeff, we can learn more about your books and, and your work at HortonLibrary.com. Is that correct? Yes, and I also have a, uh, also have a blog, and it's referenced on the website. It's on uh, Blogspot. It's uh, a novelsperspective.blogspot.com. Uh, okay. Again, if you are just tuning in, you're listening to Aspects of Writing with me, your host, James Kelly, here on KLAV 1230 on the AM dial. And on your computer, you can listen to this broadcast at klav1230am.com. Uh, you can view us live. Jen and I are here in the studio at youtube.com forward slash Aspects of Writing. Just click on the Featured button. And my guests today are authors Jeff Horton, Judy McFadden, and Dana Michelli with Writers in the Sky, and, of course, Jan Corsi. Uh, my next guest is Judy McFadden. Judy is the author of Life with McDuff. And, Judy, I've had the pleasure of having you on the show two or three times. Would you like to go ahead and give our listeners an update on who you are and what you're up to these days? Well, James, I am calling from Ohio. Mm -hmm. I recently moved from Henderson, and I, um, as you know, I've been on your show several times. My background is that um, I'm a coal miner's daughter. I was born in southwestern Pennsylvania and uh, moved to Ohio and then moved out to Henderson, Nevada, about 12 years ago. Okay. And I've moved back here recently. I worked at the... Um, 
Regional Justice Center as a courtroom clerk, and I resigned my position there to to write my first book, Life with McDoc, Lessons Learned from a Therapy Dog. Okay. Um, Judy, I know that you've been, you know, when you started writing this book, you were a new author, but a lot has happened since you wrote this book. And can you give our listeners an idea of how things have changed for you as far as, you know, your recognition for the book and what you're doing? Well, I, I wanted to also address Jan, too, because when you, when you write a book um, and, you're, and you self-publish, as I did, you have to do a lot of marketing and promoting. Mm -hmm. And uh, the way I decided to do it was to write articles, short stories, inner contests, and that has worked out very well for me. Mm -hmm. I, um, I entered a, a story, a short story from the book in uh, a uh, Angel, An Angel Animal Network contest, and I uh, was one of the winners. And as a result, my story was published in an anthology, Dogs and the Women Who Love Them, which is on the Oprah uh, website and was recommended by the uh, O Magazine. I also just recently had a short story published in Chicken Soup for the Soul. I can't believe my dog did that. <laughs> and I've done... <laughs> and um, I also, the book was nominated for a special award by Dog Writers Association of America. And um, as far as, as how I receive recognition, I was invited to the awards banquet in Manhattan, right across from Madison Square Garden, where the uh, Westminster Kennel Club Dog Show was taking place the next day, and there was people at the table who had dogs in the show, so they invited me to come and sit ringside. <laughs> so, I mean, I watched that show for years, and I never thought I would be at Madison Square Garden sitting ringside. So there's just um, uh, a lot of things. I've been on uh, TV and the radio, and I probably there's no way without McDuff that I would have been able to do this. And uh, I, I believe in writing articles. I mean, I have articles in Unity Magazine and Retirement Magazines. I did an a, uh, a article in Dog Riders Association's newsletter. And I've entered contests, the um, uh, Writer's Digest contest, and I didn't win, but the judge did a beautiful review of the book, which I have on my website, www.lifewithmcduff.com. And also, I market it to the libraries, because yeah. one thing about the libraries, um, if you can get in there, and they're hesitant to take self-published books, mm -hmm. but if you can get your books in the library, they, they will buy more than one copy. And for instance, the Free Library of Philadelphia, they have the book in about five different libraries. Yeah. And there are no returns. They buy your book, and you know they don't they don't come back. Right. So um, you know there's just different things that that you can do. The contest, the articles. You can also send your book out for reviews, and you don't have to pay. I mean, the best review I, and, and probably the one that's helped me the most. I sent the book to South Africa to a reviewer for book pleasures. It took it two weeks to get there, but it, I've got a beautiful review from her. And uh, so you can enter, like, Writer's Digest, um, you know, the self-publishing awards and whatever you, you pay to enter, but you don't always have to pay. So send your book out, you know, for reviews. That would, you know, that would be a good thing. And also I do public speaking because I, right, yeah. I promote uh, uh, the animal assistant therapy and animal assistant reading programs like Therapy Dog International and Reading with Rover. So that's one of the purposes of the book, basically, is to let people know that there are organizations like that and that if you have a child who's having problems with reading, believe it or not, taking him or her to a library once a week and letting them read to a dog can help. So basically, Judy, what you've done is you've taken hold the reins and you're steering your project. You're the one in control of this project. I'm the one, yeah. yeah. And, I think and you know something, James? Yeah. One of the reasons I've done that is sort of selfish. Um, I tried to get a publisher when I when I first uh, finished the manuscript, but that was in the middle of 2008, yeah. and that the recession was going full blast. Simon and Schuster and Random House were laying off; they weren't taking manuscripts even. So, I mean, I had to make a decision as to what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. But I'm I I sort of feel that by not having a publisher, I have more more in in my opinion more freedom 
to do with the book what I want to do. Well, I will tell you this, Judy. When you Google your name, Judy McFadden, <laughs> I think people are going to be surprised. It just yeah, about 40 pages. Straight of Judy McFadden. <laughs> Wonderful. I, I mean, it's really, truly amazing. So, and it's international, too, and it's James, international, because of yeah. you. Because, well, the book was international anyway, mm-hmm. but after Aspect of Writing, and it got on YouTube, and you know, James, I sent you some links, you know? Yeah. It, the, the book is international. It, it's unbelievable to me that people in China and Russia, and particularly India and Australia, it's just they're just wild about it. it it's 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 amazing yeah so i guess this is what we this is really good for jan when it comes to mentoring jan as well she kind of needs to follow your format and when we get to that point with her book i definitely am going to have her do that because it's so important to get your name on google you know get listed in in those search engines um, well i'll be glad to to talk to you jan or help you in yeah any way oh, judy thank you <laughs> mm-hmm. oh yeah, that'll be, be wonderful but you know something too you and 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 I I believe that you know just listening uh, to Dana, you have to have a good product. And one of the things with self a self published book and ho- and and you probably can you know will try to get a publisher. But one of the things with a self published book is that uh, for let's give you an example. I, I market it to the libraries right now on WorldCat. It's in 110 library systems, um, uh, uh, even in Australia and New Zealand. Mm-hmm. And when I sent my, you know, my little spiel to the Free Library of Philadelphia, I got a, I got a, a, a I'm surprised I got a, a reply, but they said, you know, well, you know, we, we seldom have ever accept self-published books, you know. And it was sort of like, that's the end. I've, I've kind of flipped you off. And then I got back and I gave him the reviews and I and just sent the book and whatever. He sent, he got back to me and that's what I mentioned earlier. He put it in five libraries yeah, there in I, Philadelphia. That is a very yes. important thing. You have to be persistent. You, you have but to then, be. But on the other hand, Jan, I have a chapter in the book uh, called Project Pride at Opportunity Village. I have a newscast on my home web page of, uh, of McDuff at Opportunity Village, which as a result he ended up uh, getting on the front pages of newspapers and everything. And in my book, I have a conduct page that lists Opportunity Village, right? They won't give me the time of day. Ah. <laughs> I have tried and tried and tried. So, so I, the reason I'm telling you this is that you won't always, <laughs> you won't always, you know, get, you know, to where you want, but you just keep going. Yeah, yeah. But you have to have a good product. That, that's the thing with when they see my book, uh, and, you know, the people that, because libraries don't take self-published books, a lot of them. Mm-hmm. You know, it's kind of hard to get them in. And, uh, but it, you have to have, you know, a, a good product. And, uh, and the reason I know I have a good product isn't because I'm saying so. It's because I'm just getting it back from so many places, so many people. Well, I think with you, Judy, and Dana, uh, and James here, I'm, I'm going to be a hit. <laughs> I'm going to be a hit. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're just tuning in, you're listening to Aspects of Writing with me, your host, James Kelly, here on KLAV, 1230 on the AM dial. Uh, my guests today are authors Jeff Horton, Judy McFadden, and Dana Michelli, and then Jan Corsi is here in the studio. And Jeff, I know we dropped you for a minute. Are you back online? Yes. I'm All right. right. We're going to be moving here along here. In addition to being on the air um, and mentoring Jan Corsi, uh, we have Dana Michelli, and Dana is an editor and ghostwriter. Dana, can you give us a little more about your background and services? Uh, sure. Um, well, I went to law school and decided I didn't want to do that. And I, my first love was writing, so I returned to that. And I, uh, Writers in the Sky is kind of like a one-stop shopping. We do ghost writing, we do editing, we do academic assistance, and and marketing materials for authors. And I mean, Judy, your your strategy is just amazing. Um, the article <laughs> writing, and I mean that is that's awesome. I mean. I would, <laughs> you could teach a class on it. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. <laughs> Thank you, Dana. And actually, I'll, I hate to interrupt you, Dana, but I did want to point out something because we're going to be talking about this in a minute. Uh, and Judy, I'm just curious, when you did your, your article writing, are they blurbs from the book? Well, the article I did for Dog Writers Association of America's newsletter was an article on self-publishing. Okay. It was called The Path to Self-Publishing. Mm-hmm. It was there. Uh, but the the um, story in Dogs and the Women Who Love Them, 